the Middle East is probably not the first place we think of when we think of innovative technology. But today we will learn more about how this region is contributing to the advancement of technology in the world. Hi, welcome to the Zada Show. I am Naska Zada. Today we are talking with Ray Wong. He's the author of the popular business strategy and technology blog, A Software Insider's Point of View. Here are three updates on the Middle East technology that we will be talking about on this show. First, 5G in the Middle East. Second, Ministry of Innovation in the UAE. Last but not least, Israel space and the moon landing. Ray Wong, welcome to the Zada Show. Hey, thanks a lot. Great to be on the show live here from Silicon Valley. Thank you so much for joining us again. Let's talk about 5 G innovation in the Middle East and also how it's going to um, help the market um, in the Middle East and Gulf countries, especially the Gulf countries and helping esports and digital entertainment. Wonderful. You know, the GCC is ripe for 5G innovation for a couple of reasons. Uh, one is because the spectrum wars that other countries have to battle is very is a big challenge. Right. They've got to get the right spectrum. They've got to build the infill on the lines. Uh, they've got to build and get the permits. Uh, they've got to you know, do all the auctions. Uh, and, and it's a lot easier in the Middle East, mostly because the topography is a little bit easier. Uh, and also because uh, a lot of the countries have very invested uh, you know, governments that want to make sure that 5G is the place. And 5G is a showcase of not only the future of entertainment, the future of media, but the future of telecom. And so 5G is seen as a major platform for the Middle East market. Uh, now, the other thing that's actually going to happen in this space, it, it's really both 5G and the building of fiber uh, in terms of the uh, fiber mm -hmm. infrastructure. Those two things are coming together. Now, will we get 5G handsets in the next year that we can use? Probably not. But will arenas and buildings and office spaces get 5G that's going to be useful? I think the short answer is yes. Right. And then that opens up a whole thing from you're talking about esports, entertainment, mixed reality. So all the real cool sets that we can start looking at. Um, I am so scared when you say mixed realities because I feel like it's coming. Sometimes I get confused when I watch or play some video games. Well, here's the thing, right? Um, it's not just the fact that we can use mixed reality for games. We can use it for service, right? So you're thinking about in the energy business, you know, doing the field service of capital equipment, oil fields, pipelines, right? That will have a lot of impact. Uh, fixing uh, large buildings and uh, and residential complexes, the ability to actually, you know, get to maintenance earlier, do preventive maintenance. That's going to happen earlier, and so we see a whole bunch of areas here uh, driving that. But 5G is key to driving. You know, the business, not just in entertainment and tourism, but also in oil and gas and, and mining. I think those are very important factors to look at. Mm -hmm. uh, and also news. therapy. I think some mixed realities is used for therapy. I saw a really good. Maybe next time we can focus on that. Yeah. And also in healthcare, right? To do remote telemedicine, mm -hmm. uh, the ability to get to experts uh, from across the world uh, to be able to provide that kind of access. I think it's going to be good. Now, there's some recent things that happened. I, I think, you know, we, we're seeing the way that spectrum is being changed and harmonized. That makes 5G a lot more possible. And I think that's really, really important in that investment. Uh, we also see that, you know, the broadband that's required to support 5G is happening, uh, you know, not only in uh, GCC states, uh, also in the surrounding region. So those are all creating, like, great environments uh, to be able to allow 5G to occur. Mm -hmm. Hopefully they're going to, like we talked about it last time, they're going to help with, rebuilding the some of the countries in the Middle East that they were in war torn countries. Uh, we we are moving to our next topic. Um, I saw this news. I thought it was really cool that the UAE announced Ministry of Innovation that they want to take by 2025. I think they want to have uh, more ideas and uh, promoting businesses. Tell us about what's going on there. Yeah, I think it's really nice that uh, there's a whole setup to actually fund innovation. And one of the things that's really important in the UAE right, is that to be seen as a leader uh, in the region of bringing new ideas, outside ideas, different uh, ways to look at uh, what is happening. And they've codified this, right? Uh, and, and building that uh, level of innovation allows not only just the uh, investors, uh, but also the vendors and also the potential users that want to let, uh, build that level of innovation. 
And so I thought that was a very, very interesting announcement that was there. Um, I'm not sure on your end what you thought. Um, you know, do you think other Gulf countries will also uh, jump in and then build their own uh, innovation uh, areas as well? I, I feel like, um, especially Saudi Arabia, normally Qatar, and then they, they obviously jump in, if not the same time with UAE, but around the same time. But my hope is to other countries to jump in, like Iraq, like I'm really close to that country. I'm from there. Um, Egypt, it's been really doing great hosting technology and tech trends in, uh, in their country and also encouraging young people. So I'm hoping those countries like Libya that affected by war more. I'm not worried about UAE or Saudi Arabia or Qatar, the Gulf region, because they really, like you said, they really always advance when it comes to the technology. Sometimes I feel like it's more advanced than USA or some European countries because I have friends there, they have the technology before I even hear of that technology. So it's, it's, it's fascinating. It definitely is. And I, I do want to make a correction. This is the Ministry of Possibilities mm -hmm. that also has the ability to do innovation. And what's, what's interesting about this, there's no person in charge of it, right? It, it's part of the cabinet. It's a virtual office uh, that's part of it. Uh, and, and, and I thought that was interesting that they were building this. Really think about how do they modernize um, and, uh, and improve their government systems, right? Mm -hmm. So thinking about those efficiencies, thinking about what it's like, you know, what kind of like benefits are being provided, uh, what they can do to actually streamline what they're delivering. Uh, and I thought that was wonderful. So mm -hmm. it's, uh, yeah. it's about possibilities. Which makes me think of like artificial um, intelligence, something that we can do hours and hours of talks about that too. So um, that that's really, it's coming in in our systems, not just in UAE, it's a hot topic that are we going to be replaced or humans going to be replaced by technology? Like you said, in, in health, um, you see that a robot performing a surgery that instead of like the doctor might be somewhere we don't even know. Techno I love technology and I love the energy of technology uh, if it's you know used positively, obviously. Yeah, and there's one more factor that was interesting. It's the human factor. They wanted to identify the talent uh, that should belong in this new future uh, level of thinking uh, in the region as well. And so they not only looked at technology policy and improving it, they also thought about the human aspect of uh, possibilities. Our last topic is Israel and the moon landing. Uh, obviously, you know about they're not giving up. There were some talks about they preparing to launch another, um, you know, space uh, into the space. You know, the Beersheet spacecraft, uh, you know, it was a great attempt. It was a great attempt, right. right? I mean, given all the technology, given all the smart individuals uh, in the region, uh, you know, sadly ended in a crash. Uh, but you know what? That's okay, yeah, right? Yeah. This is part of the fail fast culture, and and it's really about how do we actually, you know, iterate, learn from mistakes. You know, good thing no, there were no lives lost, right? Uh, but you know, this is the whole point, right? Is is about being able to take what the infrastructure that was required to build for space, which used to be controlled by militaries, is now being privatized, right? Which means you know, there's going to be lots of opportunities for different people to get out to space, explore space, uh, reach those regions, and that means we're going to have a lot of interesting projects along the way. Uh, in terms of satellites being launched, uh, trips to different planets. Uh, so I think this was this was really exciting, uh, you know, that they're still going to continue, that they haven't given up, you know. But uh, the good news is that, you know, the, the space IL guys are going to jump in. Yes. Right? They're going to jump in and, and do it again. Right? I wonder, and, and, sometimes I wonder how long does it take them to build um, a spaceship like that again. And it's just something, obviously, it's not <laughs> something we know about easily. You know, well, this started out when a lot of the X Prize teams were trying to figure out how to build these in, in a much cheaper fashion. You know, I think at some point, you know, the U.S. government was bloated in terms of how expensive it was to launch an aircraft. So, so by deconstructing that, keeping the infrastructure available, allowing people to privatize uh, space launches, uh, that really helped open it up. And, and then I think that captured the imagination of everybody around the world. Right. I mean, that you can launch a space aircraft uh, from different places uh, and you can be in any country in the world and, and be able to achieve maybe a moon landing or achieve maybe a trip to Mars. And, and so I think what that is, it's, it's a great step for science. Uh, and It's a great step for, you know, uh, people thinking about imagining beyond the future. Uh, be honest with me. Do you dream about going to Mars or those trips? You know, some people either do or don't. I talk to some friends. They're like, why would I go there? I still have to explore Earth, you know. What would you go? 
Are you, know, you always I thinking? I would be interested in it. My only challenge is I have motion sickness, so I don't know how to get there. I'm waiting for transformers, transporters to, you know, take me up there first, and then I'll probably be okay. But that's kind of the challenge, so. Yeah. So um, just quickly, like in 30 seconds, tell, tell me some other trends we should uh, look out for, like for next month. You know, I think the big thing we should be spending time on is cloud and mixed reality. Mm -hmm. um, cloud is still picking up. It's only 8 to 10 percent of the workloads. It's going to be the hottest thing in the Middle East over the next 36 months. People are going to be moving uh, their applications and development in the cloud. People are going to be using that for smart mm -hmm. cities and IoT. Uh, that is a huge place. Uh, I think that's going to be a great uh, opportunity for everybody. The yeah. second part that's going to be important uh, is when I'm talking about on the mixed reality aspect, it's going to change the way, because of 5G and because of better uh, internet infrastructure, it's going to change the way we experience uh, companies, brands, uh, anything from train to education to healthcare uh, to you know entertainment. Uh, but I think it's important to realize that those two factors are going to happen within the next 36 months. Things like quantum computing, eh, it's way out there. I think we've got a while. <laughs> AI is going to have a big impact. It's being used already mm -hmm. uh, in terms of uh, ensuring levels of security, uh, making sure uh, companies are compliant, uh, making sure we have uh, capabilities to recommend the next best actions, helping people make decisions. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so I think those are probably the three, cloud, mixed reality, and AI. Okay. I think um, AI, you're right, because I saw a report on how they use um, virtual um, anchors for TV shows. So soon we don't even have to do that. We just, you know, download an app and then put some information there. There's somebody who can, you know, do the job for us. Ray Wong, thank you so much. Thank you very much for having on the show. Congratulations on continued success. Ray Wong, thank you so much for this interview. And thank you so much for watching us. And I agree with Ray Wong that um, you know, I kind of like it, the top technology trends of the Middle East, um, cloud computing, uh, mixed realities, and also AI. Do you agree or do you believe some other trends in the Middle East will be popular in next month or so? Let us know and comment below. And also be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and also follow us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Again, I'm Naska Zada. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.